sing a song. Sing a song. <laughs> so what about you then? Are you fully off your, I want to say Lexapro? Lexapro, yeah. I haven't taken Lexapro in a while. Yeah. Um, there's definitely been an adjustment period. Um, there's been managing my emotions has become something I have to consciously be aware of. Um, in I'm what way? Fu- um, I find that when I'm just on Ritalin, it's almost like the Lexapro is tempering the mood affecting parts of Ritalin. Um, and when I'm just on Ritalin, that's a bit more magnified. So I have okay. to be a bit more aware of the potential mood swings and mitigate it and kind of breathe a bit more basically and bring myself back down. I'm finding I can, I'm back to when I was quite quick to anger and quite quick to being very reactionary. Yeah. Um, like not in any kind of, like, I'm not exactly like smashing glasses off a wall or anything yeah. like that, but I'm, this is bullshit kind of fast. Um, but it's like, it, it's okay. It's manageable. It's fine. It's not like, it's not like that's in any way debilitating. I just have to be aware <laughs> of how I'm feeling, you know? Um, yeah. And when I react to something, I have to kind of try and make myself take a step back and go, am I reacting to this or am I reacting to this? You know? Yeah. 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 And is it just triggering like a sense of injustice? Um, which I am quite hyper aware of at the minute and because of how I'm reacting to things. And I'm trying to see if my reactions to things are legitimate or if I'm just reacting, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, So all in all, I like but that the thing is I was on Lexapro to manage anxiety um and none of the discussions of coming off it have been around anxiety like that hasn't <laughs> peaked or there hasn't been any um haven't been any anxiety peaks or any uh, stressors around that side of things at all um, yeah. so I think Ritalin is managing the <clears throat> that side of it really well um, yeah. I'm I haven't had any any panic attacks or anything like that, or any kind of anxiety attacks uh, coming off Lexapro, which has been pretty sweet because they weren't great. I didn't have panic attacks per se. I would have, it was more like big anxiety attacks. Um, like I wouldn't have had the like the like heightened uh, heart rate, can't really do anything. It was more slow burner than that. Like I'd talk myself out of situations. Like if I knew I had a big drive coming up, mm. I'd make excuses and try and create a situation where I wouldn't have to do the drive. Yeah. yeah or yeah. like, and it would just be constantly in my head all the time. So less panic attacky, more, uh, more constant. Um, I haven't had any of that. That has been quite nice. And I'm more able to not get in my head. So like, uh, I used to be very procrastinating. Like, let's say like me and Graham were just on holiday. And the big thing for me was always like going into new places. And I'd always talk myself out of being the first person to go into a new place or mm. find reasons to not go and stuff like that. Whereas now I'm very much, Ooh, let's go here and just walking in, you know, and that, that was exactly the same. Home. I was exactly the same with that. Um, yeah. Like when we were in Rome for our honeymoon and stuff, usually I'd be like the one who wants to stay in the hotel, you know, yeah. maybe just go to the restaurant in the hotel because I'm, you know, have this kind of subconscious fear <laughs> of, of strange places. But in Rome, we walked all over the place. We didn't, you know, we had no bones about going anywhere. But you, you mentioned the, um, the not being in your head. Like that's the one bit that I miss most about, yeah. I think the Ritalin, because I'm always in my head now. Like you have no space. Yeah. I, I see it in you when, when we're talking about things, even when we're talking about simple things like editing and stuff like that, hmm. you, it's like, you find it hard to let the little things go. It's like you're almost obsessing on small details or like constantly on, you know, whereas I'm like, Oh, let's do this. Throw it up. Done. You're like, no, this is wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. And this is wrong. You know, like, 
Where yeah, I it's that things... perfectionism has come back because the yeah. little voice inside my head has come back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can. That's that's probably been the for what we're doing. That's been one of the big challenges trying to get yeah. you past that. Not everything needs to be perfect. You know what I mean. And it's funny because uh, I had I've had this conversation with a few different people, you know, friends who was starting a business, and a friend who was um, can't remember what they were doing, but it was a similar thing. And I had having gone through this process for the podcast, you know, where we realized let's get it 80% of the way and then it's fine to put out. And yeah. I had this conversation with these people and gave them that advice from the experience. But now obviously it's ricocheted back onto me um, yeah. with the ch change in circumstances. But let's see how you get on Dr. Wise to see if that, um, what's wrong with her. What's wrong with Harv? Let's see what, yeah, in the next issue of What's Wrong with Harv, things will be right with Harv, hopefully. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's, that's where things are. Um, nice. 